<laughs> give us your money. Don't go outside. Give us. Go outside. Give us your money. Don't go outside. Give us your money. If you're gonna give money. If you're gonna give us your money, go outside. But if you don't go outside, give us your money. Before the Hackney Bumps group started work on it, it was. It, it was so rough. It was so rough. I mean, it was so hard to scoot up. You couldn't go really fast. Space, but in no way would we have thought of how this space could be improved. We just took it as, as it was and just accepted it as it is. So for some people to come in and do this work off their own backs is really inspiring and I'm really, I really appreciate it and I'm really grateful. All the people that come round here, all locals, you know, all really safe, nice people, open and people. So when people come down here with their kids and that, you know, speak to their parents, see how they're doing, teach the kids some things. I feel like skate is always like going to create something because I guess like they will create a bunch but also like they want to make space for them. It's like an unknown rule that like you know you don't snake each other and you like there's etiquette so everyone's just nice to each other and wants like a space that they can call their own and not have any trouble. Like fighting for everyone. In the borough of Hackney there's actually only one other skate park. It's way across Hackney and Cliss Old Park. It's actually kind of intimidating for new riders, not to mention the fact it's in a far more affluent area than where the bumps is. There is something about the consumer world, the capitalist world that we live in, where pleasure comes from spending money and receiving. These are spaces where, I was going to say young people, but actually it's not just young people, it's lots of people can congregate that is outside of that cafe coffee culture. We can come and find pleasure without transaction without spending money, without having to engage in an exchange. This is uh, pretty much the first part I started skating, like first like actual skate park. We live like right next to this one obviously and uh, a few friends were just like yo let's go over here like try and get a skating like uh, get a little session going. Started from there and then uh, yeah just fell in love with it. It's definitely helped out a lot for like having somewhere to skate, having somewhere to cruise by and warm up. I feel like if you're just gonna go skate street then it's pretty nice to just like roll by. It, it helps out quite a lot if you're like constantly skating. At the time it was like real difficult because there wasn't really like uh there wasn't any incentive to skate here. I don't know, now it's like obviously the improvement's amazing. London's a huge city and it has one of the most amazing skate scenes in the world. By comparison, the skate parks aren't always up to par, similar to how the street spots are so rough. It's not one of those super established skate parks where there's like a, a lot of information out there and like a, a rich history. Like if you look for footage on YouTube, there's barely any, you know. And so we were trying to piece it together. Basically, it was built in 86 as a BMX park. Uh, the Tories were disbanding the GLC. Hackney um, and, and all boroughs basically were concerned with losing the money that they had. It was going to be absorbed into this like Thatcher regime. So one of the things that they did was build the bumps. Um, and that's kind of awesome. It's like it stands in resistance to the sort of Tory Thatcher regime. And I love that. So Hackney bumps is like one of those old school London parks, you know, like the old Cantalows, you know, like quite basic, quite stripped back, quite open. It's a bit later than Stockwell, but it's in that similar design. surface obviously gets rougher and rougher and there's big cracks appear and and 
even just down to stuff like the trees drop tons of leaves, the council never cleared it, they clog up the drains, it rains, it never drains away and so you end up with this stupid moat all the way around like the middle of the skate park it makes it like unskatable in winter it wasn't repaired um, no one's there sort of like managing it and I think that's kind of why it ended up being such a sort of forgotten gem because no one knows about it kind of sketchy when I first came here because it you never really knew if you were going to get robbed or not that was kind of the vibe I felt like uh, what really kept people away was like it just didn't seem as inviting there wasn't as many people actually using the park so it was kind of like abandoned in a way it was that classic thing we'd skate there and you'd have the same conversation every time so someone really needs to sort this place out and then I think one day we just were like oh I guess it's going to be us then it was before much of the work was done that the use of the bumps escalated and by September, every time I came down here, there was another adult with a couple of kids skating and often it was an adult who hadn't been on skateboard for years who was getting back on because of the lessons because it had got people involved. We set up an Instagram page and people were hitting us up, offering like help and we just started doing free skate lessons and got a grant for that. The response was just, was just awesome. Having somebody who's very patient and encouraging and giving him a few tips without it necessarily feeling too much like a lesson, I think it's really helpful. And if you're providing something for the community that kids and a lot of people will use, then you're less likely to trash it, um, possibly. You can see how it's all blown out through there. There's been a small repair here. This crack is just starting to chase out here again already. At the time we didn't know about polishing and Daryl from Batong, he, like, he was one of the first people that hit us up and that really helped because he obviously knows an awful lot about this stuff. Kind of a sick... Are we able to do like next... bold corner? Like, we've, we've... I work for a company called Batong Park. We're a Norwegian company originally and we built hundreds of skate parks all across Scandinavia. And we set up an office here, mainly working actually just with design and consultation to try and get more interesting things built to ride skateboards on. And around that same time, moving into Hackney, I found out about the Hackney Bumps project. It is a legendary spot and it has so many special, unique features, so we always wanted to preserve that. We just wanted to find a way to make them rideable again and then kind of enhance them through anything we were going to add on. Literally, we stood here one winter's day, did a metre square of polishing. It took long enough that we could see how much work was involved in polishing 1,200 metres square of concrete. And I, in my older, cynical self, said, it's too much work, we've got to get somebody in to do this. And these boys, back to the enthusiasm again, we can do that ourselves. We were pretty deep in talks with a major funding body and Hackney Council. We had provisional yes for the project from both of them, uh, although they wouldn't actually settle on an amount of money they were going to give us. It became quite a drawn out process and at that point we thought we can't wait indefinitely with nothing happening at the skate park. We'd done some test, test polishing, we knew that polishing was the way that we wanted to go so we just started doing it. This kind of process for restoring a skate park is actually quite common in Scandinavia. In Sweden they've been polishing parks that are about 10 or 15 years old, but to my knowledge the precedent for polishing a park that's 35 years old is almost non-existent. So we had to adjust the technique slightly and as far as I know this is the first park period in the UK that's been restored in this way. You just gotta get on your knees and just graft it for hours. It is a little bit long, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, like the repeated process of it is kind of daunting, but 
at the same time, once you look back at all the work that you've done over a collective period of time, it's actually like, wow, that's pretty sick, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? We're using handheld angle grinders and extractor hoovers, and we've got to do three passes, like a rough one and then two softer ones. And then after that, you buy a sealer, which really like hards up the top. As well as polishing, we started kind of to build DIY although it's kind of not quite DIY because it's with Daryl. So it's like a, a DIY skate ethic, but like perfect. We were calling it like a pro DIY. Basically Daryl's the pro, we're DIY. To put it in perspective, we were getting quotes from between 150,000 to 300,000 pounds, obviously for different things. But for, but for 11,000 pounds, we can make a good new skate park in London in an area that doesn't have one. When the coronavirus hit, the funding body put the project on hold indefinitely. Uh, literally just that, we got that in an email. Like reading between the lines, they're just like, it's going to be long. Do you know what I mean? That was like basically what they were saying. Greg and I were out of work, lockdown came in and we thought, well, we can do it safely, we can isolate and we've polished the bumps every day since and we've got a lot done. Just decided that we'd like, we'd meet at quarter to eight, go there so we can start at 8 a.m., go to midday, Monday to Friday. pretty exhausting to do four hours of polishing. But there's definitely days when I wake up and I'm just like, why are we doing this? You know what I mean? But like, I know Nick's gonna be waiting now in the corner. So like, just get up and do it. There's a huge precedent for using this technique elsewhere in the UK. Legendary skate parks such as Harrow and Romford and South Sea could all be given a new breath of life for this process. I'd expect the bumps to be able to last in a really good state for another 10, 15 years if we're lucky. I really like the fact that it's the like, original concrete and we're regenerating it rather than just pouring a new slab on top. I like the idea of like preserving it, but the difference that it's made at the skate park is amazing. It's like real drastic in a way where you can actually skate and it's like, like obviously like a great improvement. Now people can actually like cruise the park and not have to worry. For like, I don't know, children as well. It's like easily way more safe. It's like definitely brought life back to it to be honest. So we 
come to the strange conclusion that in madness lies sin. This is my first time skating here, but I've just been trying to skate a bit of everything. Although I haven't hit the curb yet, but I've been trying to find lines over the bumps to then get to the quarter, and then use that to like move around. I guess the closest I can think of is Stockwell because of the bumps, but the surface, they need to resurface there, and also there's not as many bumps. They all like, look like little whales. <laughs> Which just makes it even more fun. It's kind of more DIY, which is always, but like, it's really smooth, so it doesn't feel like DIY. <laughs> and there's like so many like parks in London, like, that are like old and crusty and gross. And imagine it's the same. Up until now, we've been self funding everything. It's a lot of money, but there's kind of a core group of us, and we've been doing it over, you know, months and months, so, so it's been alright. We're out of work now. Um, and the funding's fallen through, quite simple. Those two things together I mean, you know, we just can't self-fund it anymore. I haven't got enough time to give to it, but I am lucky. I am still salaried in this process and I feel very fortunate for that. I'm not spending as much, so what I'm trying to do is give a chunk of money every month when my salary comes in and just help to try and keep the wheels turning. And thankfully quite a lot of other people have also seen it that way. Uh, angle grinders, extractors, um, all the discs, like that's expensive, it adds up. And then on top of that, um, the sealer, which is in itself is about £2,000. But not only that, but we want to pay people London living wage to continue the polishing. Now we've kind of exposed the concrete. Like if we don't like finish the process after a winter or two winters, we're just going to end up with like back where we were. We're stoked that we've done it, but you know what would be really nice as if like we could pay some of the volunteers who've like helped out to finish the job. You don't have to donate a lot of money to the bumps, but it's like a great investment. It's something that you will see and it's something that will generally help the community because there's a lot of different projects out there, but you aren't going to actually see much progress in it. At the bumps, I feel like you can visually see the change that your money makes. We're looking for 11 grand for our crowdfunding campaign, which is nothing when it comes to like regenerating a skate park. It's literally nothing. From my experience, it doesn't really seem like there's going to be more booms and waves of skateboarding. It really seems like it's here to stay. Given the shortfall in council budgets and all the hardship inflicted on all of us with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, it's so important for groups of skaters to band together and try and find these cost-effective and community-based solutions. Chem fix goes off real quick and usually the nozzle gets stuck before you finish but we managed to finish it all so this won't take too long to go off at all. such a good feeling to finish the first pass like you know it's been about three months and I just can't really believe how this has all happened it's all just like snowballed and all of a sudden there's a round bar in there and quarters and a ledge and the whole thing's like so much more polished and there's so many people here and I don't know I'm just like just so happy to be part of this man it's been awesome. like so so good. I don't know if a lot of people realise it, but skating is one of those kind of like activities. You don't even need to like be the same age group, like race, anything of that sort. It's kind of like bringing people together, which is a nice feeling. I skate because of the way it makes me feel when I'm riding my board. It's like a distraction from everything else. School is really stressful for me, and like it's it's a great way to just let loose. Anything that you can ride, anything with wheels, is welcome here. That's why lots of people should get behind the bumps. Big up Hackney Rumps group there, yeah. the grinders for coming down here, putting the hours in and grafting for all of us because we're coming down here, we're skating and we're enjoying it. But behind the scene, they're down here early, kittle in the corner, making coppers and doing that, man. That's like, 
What can't you love, man? Like, sick. <laughs> <laughs> Smashed it, so yeah, so you smashed it. If you want to donate to the crowdfunder, it's gofundme.com and then search for Hackney Bumps, regenerating Hackney Bumps. Uh, or yeah, hit us up on Instagram, we've got PayPal. And thank you.